Right now, as you're watching this video, there's a company in Texas building the largest, most powerful rocket ever created. Not for satellite launches, not for moon trips, but for something far more audacious, making humanity a multi-planetary species. This is the inside story of how SpaceX plans to put 1 million people on Mars by 2050. And it's not science fiction anymore. It's engineering reality. What you're about to hear sounds impossible. A city on another planet. Humans living 140 million miles from Earth. But here's what makes this different. It's actually happening. SpaceX has already built and tested the vehicles. They've solved problems NASA spent decades struggling with. By the end of this video, you'll understand exactly how they're going to do it, why it might actually work, and what could still go catastrophically wrong. Let's dive in. In 2002, Elon Musk asked a simple question. How much would it cost to send a greenhouse to Mars? The answer? About $1 billion. For a single mission. Musk realized the problem wasn't engineering, it was the cost. Here's the master plan. First, build a fully reusable rocket system. This is Starship, the massive stainless steel beast you've seen test flights over South Texas. Second, drive the cost per launch down to under $10 million. A space shuttle launch cost one and a half billion. Starship aims to be 150 times cheaper while carrying three times more cargo. Third, establish a propellant depot in orbit, a gas station in space. Starship launches partially fueled, docks with the depot, fills up, then heads to Mars. Fourth, send cargo ships first, each carrying 100 tons of equipment, supplies, and habitats. By the time humans arrive, there's already a base waiting. Fifth, use Mars's resources to make fuel for the return trip. Mars's atmosphere is 95% carbon dioxide. Combine that with underground ice, add solar energy, and you can manufacture methane and oxygen right there. Finally, scale. Don't send a handful of astronauts. Send hundreds, then thousands. Build not an outpost, but a city. It sounds insane, but every single piece is based on technology SpaceX is actively developing right now. Let's talk about Starship, because nothing else matters if this vehicle doesn't work. Standing 121 meters tall, Starship produces over 16 million pounds of thrust. That's nearly twice the power of the Saturn V that took us to the moon. But here's what makes it revolutionary. It's designed to land. Both stages. The booster returns to the launch site and is caught mid-air by giant mechanical arms. The upper stage can land on any planetary surface. The first three test flights were spectacular failures, but SpaceX views explosions as data. Flight 4 achieved a soft splashdown. Flight 5 caught the booster with the chopsticks on the first try. Flight 6 pushed further with high-altitude engine tests. SpaceX is iterating faster than any rocket program in history. They're building these vehicles in weeks, not years. Production line manufacturing of spacecraft has never been done before. The target? Make Starship reliable for human flight by 2026. Ambitious? Ask the people who said landing orbital rockets was impossible. SpaceX has landed over 250 boosters successfully. Here's the economics. Starship could launch for under $10 million and carry 150 tons to orbit. That's a cost per kilogram that changes everything. When you can launch that cheaply, you can send massive amounts of cargo to Mars. And you need to, because Mars is trying to kill you. Let's get brutally honest about what Mars colonization actually means. Mars is cold, average temperature, minus 63 degrees Celsius. Mars has no breathable air. The atmosphere is less than 1% the density of Earth's. Step outside without a pressure suit and your blood literally boils. Mars is bathed in radiation. Without a magnetic field, cosmic rays hit the surface constantly. Stay for a year, and you'll receive 100 times the radiation dose you'd get on Earth. That significantly increases cancer risk. Mars has toxic dust loaded with perchlorates. This dust gets everywhere. And here's the psychological nightmare, communication delay. At closest approach, there's a four minute delay one way. At furthest, 24 minutes. You can't have a conversation. You can't call home during a crisis. So why would anyone go? Because humans are explorers. 
Because being part of making humanity a spacefaring civilization is worth the risk. Because Earth has one basket, and all our eggs are in it. One asteroid, one supervolcano, one unstoppable pandemic, and it's over. Mars is insurance. It's also an opportunity. The people who go first will build something entirely new. New government systems, new economic models. They'll be founding not just a city, but a civilization. But first, they have to survive. Here's how the first mission actually happens. SpaceX is targeting 2026 for uncrewed cargo missions. Mars launch windows open every 26 months when Earth and Mars align properly. Mission Phase 1. Two cargo starships launch in 2026, no humans. Each carries 100 tons. Habitat modules, solar panels, a nuclear reactor, a fuel production plant, life support, and supplies. Six to nine months in transit. They land using the same technique SpaceX perfected with Falcon 9, adapted for Mars's thin atmosphere. Once landed, they deploy solar panels and begin producing oxygen and methane fuel using Mars's atmosphere and subsurface ice. Mission Phase 2, 2028. Four more cargo starships, more habitats, rovers, greenhouses, communication satellites, and critically, return propellant. By the time humans arrive, Fuel for the return trip is already manufactured and stored. Mission Phase 3, 2030 or 2031, the first human mission. Between 12 and 20 people. Engineers, medics, geologists, botanists, people who can fix what breaks and improvise when plans fall apart. Multiple starships launch for redundancy. They carry life support, food for three years, medical supplies, and spare parts. Six months in a cramped spacecraft. Then the most dangerous part, landing. Starship has to nail a powered descent where no one can rescue you if something goes wrong. They land near the cargo ships. Day one, confirm power, oxygen, water, communications. Within a week, they're living in a small base. For two years, they build, test systems, explore, prove humans can live and work on Mars, grow food in Martian regolith, deal with equipment failures, dust storms, and isolation. When the launch window opens again, they load up with samples and data, and they come home. If they survive, the floodgates open. The first mission is just proof of concept. The real plan is exponential growth. SpaceX's vision. By the 2030s, send dozens of starships every launch window, each carrying 100 people or 100 tons of cargo. That's thousands of people per decade. Initial settlement. Starship hulls buried under Martian regolith for radiation protection. Inflatable habitats, greenhouses growing potatoes and soybeans. Life support recycling every drop of water and breath of air. Power comes from massive solar farms and small nuclear reactors. Mars gets about 40% of Earth's sunlight, but with no weather, solar is reliable. The early economy is simple. Support expansion, mine water ice, extract minerals, manufacture building materials from Martian regolith, produce propellant. Everything is about bootstrapping towards self-sufficiency. As the population grows, specialization emerges. Teachers, doctors, scientists, artists, culture develops. The first Mars-born children arrive. By the 2040s, if everything goes right, there's a city of 10,000 people. By 2050, perhaps 100,000. Why this scale? because that's the estimated minimum for a self-sustaining civilization. Enough genetic diversity, enough specialization, enough redundancy that Mars survives if Earth stops sending supplies. The ultimate goal? Mars becomes independent, mining its own resources, manufacturing its own technology, perhaps even building its own starships. So is this really going to happen? Here's what we know. SpaceX is spending billions developing Starship. They're testing aggressively. NASA has contracted Starship for lunar landings. The vehicle is real. The physics works. Getting to Mars has been done with robots dozens of times. The challenge is cost, reliability, and scale. SpaceX's entire approach solves exactly those problems. But here's what could go wrong. Starship could fail to achieve needed reliability. The economics might not work. People could die on Mars, causing public support to collapse. Political priorities could shift. Yet I'd bet on this happening. Why? Because the trend is clear. Every year, launch costs drop. Every year, 
SpaceX proves skeptics wrong. Every year, technology improves. 20 years ago, landing and reusing orbital rockets was impossible. Now it's routine. 10 years ago, private companies sending astronauts to orbit was science fiction. Now, it's unremarkable. Mars is the next impossible thing. And impossible just means hasn't been done yet. One day, possibly in our lifetimes, a child will be born on Mars. They'll grow up under a salmon pink sky, seeing two moons at night. They'll visit Earth the way we visit other countries. And when they ask how it started, the answer will trace back to a company in Texas that decided to build really big rockets. The future is coming, and it's going to be extraordinary. Hit subscribe if this fascinated you, and tell me in the comments, would you go to Mars if given the chance?